Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be installing an after cooler on my 60 gallon Ingersoll Rand air compressor using this D-Rail oil cooler that I bought on Amazon. So stay tuned. So welcome back to the channel. If you guys checked out one of my earlier videos, I had acquired the 60 gallon air compressor from my job. They were throwing it out because they didn't need it anymore. So I basically refurbed it. So on a recent video, I did a hydro test on that tank to make sure that it can hold pressure up to 270 PSI just in case there was any corrosion or rust that might have damaged the tank or damaged the inside of the tank to make sure that there was no explosions or potential for explosion when I put this tank back into service. So after doing a little bit more research, I discovered that a lot of people install after coolers on their air compressors to keep the air dry. The D-Rail 15300 model is one of the preferred ones that's pretty affordable. It's like $60 to $65 depending on where you buy it. And this thing does a really good job from all the people I've seen online do it. So today we're going to go ahead and install it. I'll show you all the parts I'm going to use over here in a second, but we'll go ahead and get this mounted on there, cut some lines, flare some lines, and get it all installed. So over here, I've got all the parts and tools I'm gonna need for this project. So I've got the 15300 oil cooler right here with the eight AN fittings, which is basically half inch flares. So over here, I've got the water filter and automatic drain valve. I've got the mounting kit to mount this to my shroud over there. Then I've got all the different flare fittings, some new half inch aluminum tube. You could use copper tube if you want to also. So basically for my setup, I've got 5 8 tube over there coming out of a compressor into a tank, but I need to convert it down to half inch. Almost impossible to find flare fittings to go from a half inch to 5 8 inch. I'm using some compression fittings from 5 8 to 1 half, which is not ideal, but it'll work. All the other AN fittings, I'm just using half inch flare. I needed a half inch straight and a half inch elbow right here to come out of this thing and into the tank. And then I've got my flare tools right here. I've got a double flare kit right here because I want to use double flares to make it more robust. Then over here is my filter setup for the air coming out of the tank. And then my half inch service port that goes from the tank into that filter set right here. And then from there, I'll just put a regular uh, quick connect to my hoses from there. If you guys want a list of all the different fittings and sizes I need for my setup, go check out the links down in the description. I'll show you all the parts I use, everything that I bought on Amazon or on eBay or at Lowe's, and you can buy this stuff yourself and do this project yourself. So over here on the tank, here's my discharge line from the compressor down to the tank. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it right here where it makes this little L turn right here. So this bottom one that goes into the tank is gonna go into that compression fit from 5 eighths down to 1 half. I'm gonna mount the water drain and filter right here. So back here, I'm gonna mount the D-rail onto this shroud right here and I'm gonna use the pulley as like a natural fan when this thing's running to pull the air across that D-rail to do the heat exchange. Once it comes out of that D-rail, I'm gonna have it loop around over here. It's gonna go around the tank and into the filter that's gonna be mounted right here. And that's gonna be the water drain that collect before it goes into the tank. So I was trying to cut this on the actual compressor, but I didn't have enough room. So I had to take the whole pipe off so I could cut it on the table to make it easier. <laughs> All right, so I cleaned up my cuts. I cleaned off the old paint there. I deburred the holes so that the compression fit gets a good grab here. And I cleaned off the paint on this side where it goes into the compressor and into the tank to make sure when I put my uh, thread lock on here that it holds pretty well. All right, looks like we ran into a little bit of problem. This thing is basically seized on there. It won't move no matter how hard I try. I don't want to risk breaking it because it is kind of hollow inside here. If you put too much force, it might snap this thing inside and I'll be stuck. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna actually just thread this thing in and see if I can bend this thing up and maybe aim this thing upward and then hopefully that works. All right, I was able to bend this right around this corner right here. I started crushing so I ended up using that flaring tool clamp and I just clamped it along the edge to kind of get the thing back. So it's sort of a mineral bin now. It's kind of ugly, but once I get this back on, I'll probably just coat this with some black paint to hide all this. But this should be able to mount to there now and kind of bend back around so I can connect it to the D-rail. So I went ahead and pulled the shroud off the actual compressor 
to make it easier to work. I already marked where I want to mount this thing. So what I'm going to do is basically put it onto here like that. So right here is where the fan is going to be or the, the pulley. And I'm going to mount it with these guys right here. So they're just basically zip ties. Actually mount behind the grill here and they go right there. And then they go actually through the coil here. You can see, you see right through the coil. So you have to actually go through there. It's best to probably line it up with one of these uh, 16 fins that go across here. And that way it supports it on the actual tube right here instead of the actual the fin here. And then once you do that, it comes with these springs and then some little tape here to put on either side to kind of protect the coil. And then you put these on the other end to hold them in. Got everything mounted, put the springs on here with these stoppers. These stoppers are kind of weak. They keep on popping out if you put too much pressure on them. So I just put them right where it was getting some tension on the springs, which is good enough to hold it on. I might end up putting like a tie strap up here just to hold it up in case it does pop out for any reason. But I think the springs and then these things should work fine. I just cut them down once I put it on there and finalize everything. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mount this thing on the side of the tank there. Luckily over here, there's already two holes that are here. So I'm gonna use one of those holes. I'm gonna drill a second one to fit the bracket on and then mount that there. You basically wanna mount it a little bit lower than the output of the cooler. So that way, gravity naturally causes the moisture to go down and into this thing. So now that we got the water separator mounted on here, I'm gonna go ahead and put in the fittings on here so I can put my piping on later. Instead of using Teflon, I'm gonna use this 545 Loctite thread sealant, which is probably a better sealant than the regular Teflon. Uh, you can use Teflon if you want, but I'd rather use this on all my fittings anyways. Got everything in as tight as I could. With any of these fittings, always wanna tighten it down as much as you can, especially since you're sealing it so it doesn't leak. I've had it in the past where I tightened it, just hand tightened, and it ended up leaking. So just make sure you tighten it. And this one, I had to really force it because I needed the angle to come outwards so I could loop it back into that other spot over here. All right, so next thing I need to do is measure how much of this I need and then cut it down and then start flaring the edges and getting everything mounted up here with all the fittings. So once you get this thing cut, you use the little triangle thing on here to kind of open up the flare a little bit because when you squeeze it down, you actually make it a little bit smaller. So you just wanna deburr this and get it all cleaned up you could use a pair of needle nose to do the same thing also. The needle nose might open it up a little bit easier. So once you clean that up, we can start flaring it out right there. Before we bend it, you wanna put the fittings in here and just flare the edges that you need to. That way it's easier because you don't wanna put these flare fittings in once you start curving this thing because they're very tight tolerances. So to do the double flare, we wanna just get it into here a little bit above the actual curve on this thing. And when you use the double flare, you can use that thickness of this thing as a gauge to how far above you wanna keep this thing so you could actually get the flare correct. You wanna do a thickness of that thing and then tighten it down. So once you tighten it down, just check the thickness, make sure it's as thick as this thing. And then you just flip this thing upside down, put it inside the hole, and then you do the flare tool right here to get the first flare. So you wanna make sure you get it tight, flush, right down to the bar. And once you do that, loosen this thing up remove that double flare fitting, and then just do the regular flare after that. 
is you can tell, see, that it flattened down that flare right into that hole. Once you reflare it again, it's gonna give you that nice double lip. Yep, you see that nice double lip now? Should be nice and sealed. What you're gonna do is just take some 600 grit or 400 grit and sand some of this down because you do mar up these edges when you clamp it down, so you just wanna clean that. You see my little nut fell off, but luckily I still got the straight tube, so I'm gonna just go ahead and slide it back on. Slide the nut in, make sure it sits nice and tight. You can see it's nice and clean in there. That's the way you wanna do a double flare. So the next thing I wanna do is I wanna use this little pipe bender. It's just basically a spring to turn this thing into there without crushing the pipe. So now I just mocked it up into the water separator. I'm just gonna bend it slowly with this thing. Slide it on in here. Start at the bottom here with your radius and just get it down and just slowly bend it and turn it by hand. And then you wanna kinda slide this out as you go. That way you don't get it stuck in there. You wanna make a really sharp bend coming out of here and then you wanna straighten it into that guy over here. So I got everything mocked up right now, pretty much where it needs to be. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up actually putting in the compression fittings, tightening it down and getting this kind of set up over here and then I can continue the rest of the install. So to put this compression fitting in, you wanna put the nut on, you wanna put the little Pharrell uh, bushing, which is this thing, into there, and then you put this on. You wanna make sure the pipe goes all the way to the end here in the stopper, and then you wanna tighten it down after that. All right, so I tightened it on here. I put a little bit of that 545 thread lock on there just for safety. I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing into the tank, thread it down there, and then tighten this even more tight once I get it on there and get some more leverage. So I got pretty much everything mounted up right here. On the compression fitting, you wanna tighten it down as much as you can. You don't wanna over tighten it because you're gonna mess up that little a ferrule ring inside that you use. You wanna just tighten it basically so it doesn't move anymore, don't overdo that. Um, on this one, this is a flare fitting, so you wanna tighten this as much as possible just to get that seal and get that flare to made up with the male and female side of it, so that's nice and tight there. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and do all this stuff up here, bend that line over, connect it to there. I'm gonna just time lapse everything, go real fast since I already showed you guys basically how to do this right here. So I got it bent nicely, it goes right here. And over here it lines up with that AAN fitting. So we'll go ahead and finish this up. I'm gonna go bend the lower tube right there. So that way I just do all the flares at one time. Yeah, look how clean and nice these flares ended up being. Like I said earlier, you're gonna have these little burrs right here. Just go ahead and just sand that down with some sandpaper and get it all smooth again. Same with the rest of the lines and stuff on this pipe. All right, I was able to make all the connections. All the tube is bent nicely. It goes around, I've gave it a little bit of an angle right here that kind of goes downwards. So gravity sends the liquid and the moisture down into this filter or water collector. 
So this is an auto drain. It's gonna end up dumping the water down here. I might just put a tube or a hose into a bucket if it gets really bad on the way it drips. You can always also just twist this thing off manually and just pull it out and dump it right there. So it's pretty easy. It's just a quarter turn twist off. Hopefully all the connections are good and all the flares are good. Uh, with this whole setup right here, this thing does only charge this line when it's actually running. I think once this compressor shuts off, this thing actually uh, releases or purges the air and the check valve down here in the tank keeps all the air in the tank from going back out. So this whole circuit is only needs to be airtight when it's actually charging. All right, I went ahead and moved my compressor back into here, made the electrical connections, made the connection down here for the service port out to my secondary regulator and dryer over here. So hopefully this thing doesn't have to do that much work. There is a double water collection over here in case there is moisture, but I think with our new uh, after cooler setup, that thing will probably be uh, moot as far as the work it has to do, because that one back here is gonna be doing most of the work for us. So we're gonna go ahead and fire this up, see what the temperatures are, input and output, and see what kind of temperature drop we have with this new after cooler. All right, before we're starting, it's about 71 degrees on the output right here, right out of the compressor before we're starting to run. We're gonna measure that, and then we're gonna measure the input going into the tank and see what the differential is. After running with no air moving, that thing gets up to 250 degrees. Input shaft down here gets up to 90 degrees. This is after it's been running. When it was running, we saw that it got up to around 200 on the output. And then down here, when we got to the input into the tank, we were getting around 70 to 75 degrees, which was like a 100, 125 degree drop. So that's a huge difference in the amount of temperature drop and differential thanks to that after cooler. So that one little fill up right there just filled up this water reservoir, pretty much about a 20% of the capacity of this thing. So that is a decent amount of moisture that it took out of there. Hey guys, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this after cooler install on the air compressor. As you can see, it's a pretty straightforward project, especially if you have a larger air compressor. And you watched all the way to the end, obviously, this is one of the projects that you wanna do. If you need any of the products that I use in this project, check out the links down in the description to Amazon or Home Depot. Most of these parts are pretty common plumbing parts that you can get, including the tool. So just check out those links if you need any of this stuff. Remember guys, with all these different DIY projects, if I can do it, you can do it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe to your channel to stay on top of all my different DIY videos whether I'm doing stuff for the car, in the garage, or for the house. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next time.